All right, hey guys, uh, welcome to the next uh, Twitch stream. We're basically um, this week uh, mostly going to go over Blender and start to kind of like work on this process for you know developing this whole piece. We're starting to get that happening. Um, I'm going to move through Blender fairly um, slowly, um, just so you guys can kind of like yeah get a get an introduction to to Blender um, and kind of like go from there so um, I guess without too much further intro let's just kind of get into this so <clears throat> basically we've got this um, uh, we've got this um, 3d coat sculpt that we've kind of been uh, working on here uh, uh, uh. Sorry, just trying to uh, remember keys. <laughs> Too many different programs using different things. So we've we've got this um, yeah three D coat sculpt that we've kind of been working on. So once again, just kind of like going over the probably need to open this up. Going over this whole uh, process, just in case anyone is new in here. Hey guys in the chat, yeah, feel free to ask questions. Uh, we're going very much, uh, uh, we're going very much, um, you know, working from home, <laughs> self isolation mode in this. I'm still in the studio, but Nathan, who's moderating, is at, at at his home, um, just doing this remotely. So we're hoping this will go just kind of smoothly. I'm sure, it'll be fine. But um, <clears throat> yeah. So basically, we've got this. We've got our overall brief. Remember, so if anyone's sort of like trying to sort of follow along with this type of thing. Just you know, start with that brief. You can update that as you go along. You know, have a think about what we want to do. So with this one here, I want to do thumbnails, multiple design callouts, 3D sculpts, blender scene, final Photoshop painting. So um, yeah, we're heading in that kind of direction. So obviously, working on the working on the uh, thumbnails here, um, and uh, this is the one that we're going to kind of hopefully achieve. You know, this this kind of image um, at the end. Um, of this uh, <laughs> of this um, project um, and yeah so so then we're kind of like yeah developing up developing up all our bits and pieces from there so yeah sort of starting out kind of like designing up these these shapes with the basic line tool and stuff um, and then kind of going on and refining and developing these areas further so yeah like I said this week just going to try and get a bit more into the to the blender um, side of things. Oh, great! Glad that audio is good. We've been tinkering with that stuff, so trying to get it just right. <laughs> it's all the all the settings you got to play around with. Hey, uh, but yeah, we're getting there. So, streaming a lot at the moment and doing online classes, so it's all kind of getting smoother and smoother, which is really cool. Um, yeah. So basically, we've got these pieces here um, in uh, in 3D code. So now it's kind of a, a matter of just getting these out. Um, now I sort of have started putting together some of this in in three, you know 3D code, like kind of blocking this out. So we're probably just going to have to break it down um, and kind of put it back together piece by piece. Um, and also going to kind of use like my Photoshop stuff for that, like how we're going to kind of lay it out. So really all I've done here is sort of like one building, I suppose. Like if we kind of go back in here, there's all this other kind of stuff that we could kind of work on right so i'll probably have to do some more kind of sculpting in 3d coat and things like as we kind of move forward but for now let's just start and sort of block it in and seeing kind of where we can get to and stuff and i think that um i think that like it'd be cool to have some scaffolding and maybe some statues and so there's quite a bit of like work that sort of needs to be done kind of like delving into this but uh, like i said let's try and get a bit of a start in blender and i'll kind of show you like a whole bunch of you know tools and techniques you can use to kind of do that so i guess without further ado let's open up blender and kind of get into that so i guess some of this might be boring for some people if you kind of like already know how to use blender you know and then this bit's a bit kind of boring um i'll try and i'll go through it sort of attention attention the cause of the alarm has been investigated oh. <laughs> please stand by Cool. Repeating. That's good. Attention, Didn't attention. even know that was the one. I don't know if you guys can hear it on the stream, Please but stand by. <laughs> apparently I'm about to get evacuated from my office. Let's hope not. Anyway, that'll probably pop up a few times now if there's been some fire escape 
door tripped or something anyway <laughs> um bradley's asking am i using a cintiq no i just i hate a cintiq <laughs> i'm left-handed we got cintiqs in the studio here but like yeah i just i'm left because i'm left-handed it's like the world is set up for right handers right like it really is whenever i'm on the cintiq i'm just like even just i actually think left -handed, sorry i'm gonna get sidetracked here right i actually think left-handed people should write right to left instead we write left to right so you think about it left handers you just cover up your writing all the time whereas right-handed people they never cover up their writing you can always see it right fantastic <laughs> so i don't know whoever invented left handers very silly thing so whenever i'm on a cintiq i really hate it because i'm always my hands always in the way of kind attention of what's going attention on. the course of the alarm um, is being investigated please stand by Repeating. Sorry, guys. Attention, attention. The cause of the alarm is being investigated. Please stand by. All right. So, um, <clears throat> yeah. So, uh, what I'm going to do here is I just made just open up Blender, do a new general one. Um, uh, just in terms of Blender, just Google it. You can download it. It's totally free. Just get the latest one, which is like 2.82 or something. There's probably I don't know. They're always coming out with new ones. It's pretty cool. So you're just trying to always um you know download the latest one so let's just quickly go through like a bit of navigation so um all i did was blender general and it just comes in like this right with a cube in in blender middle click that'll rotate around the object so that's really cool um it sucks if you only have a if you to have a two button mouse <laughs> like if you're on a mac um without the kind of like third you know three button mouse if you're on a mac just go buy a five dollar mouse that'll solve your problem you can obviously set it to your um t buttons on um on uh your stylus right you can have middle click on there i just when i kind of get into this 3d full-on 3d world i find it a bit difficult on the tablet it's just it's personal preference whatever you guys whatever you guys are kind of like doing so um uh yeah you know what i mean um <laughs> so uh, yeah Bradley I see what I see what you're saying yeah <laughs> um, so middle mouse button that'll rotate around right really cool and then uh, shift middle mouse button will like pan and and what else zoom in and out it's just a scroll wheel so like it's super easy that's the navigation stuff it's actually way simpler than 3d code <laughs> it's just yeah very very good so um, I think maybe even when you open up Blender for the first time, there's like an option where you can choose like select is left click. Just make sure you do all that stuff. Just set it up like that and it will kind of work. So so basically I just clicked off the cube there, but let, let, left click will just literally select, God, I can't talk. We'll select the cube, all right? So um, yeah, and then you just middle mouse button, rotate around, all that kind of stuff. So pretty cool. So really simple things are, you know, like, oh, the other thing I'd say to do is like look up um, Blender Guru on YouTube. So, um, uh, um, have I tried industry standard shortcut mode? I don't. What is that? I don't know what that is. <laughs> to be honest, I like have no idea about Blender. Hey, I just I literally just use it for the things I want to do. There's some stuff the other day where I was like, oh, I was trying to get a camera in and stuff, and I'm like, I have no idea what I'm doing here. But I just yeah, I just hack it until I can get it to work. So yeah i'm going to show you the very budgeto way of doing it now yeah so excellent tutorials are the blender guru ones um uh yeah they're, they're awesome so just go on youtube search for blender guru and do the donut so yeah that's just a great way of um we'll just bring that up because um all right, so I'm just gonna, let's just. Oh, let's not do that. Um, yeah, so basically like Blender Guru, yep, YouTube. This guy here, Andrew. Uh, yeah, and basically if you just go down to like part one here, beginner tutorial, beginner tutorial. So if you've never used Blender 4, this is fantastic. And just doing the donut, it's like once you kind of get up to this like part seven, 
like you're kind of pretty much good to go like it's awesome he does a super super good job of explaining all of this stuff which is great and i just did these and i've told heaps of students to do these and they all pick it up like it's really easy um yeah so it's great so just do those because he goes over he's going to go over what these things do like way more in depth than i'm going to just because yeah i don't really know what all the stuff does <laughs> whereas he he's super good blender artist so yeah um so you've got, there's a kind of couple of things. So you can basically, um, you can click on these. Um, you can click on these buttons here and they will, um, uh, th they will kind of, yeah, navigate around to like the X, Y, Z, you know, like top, front, side, back, you know, all of that kind of stuff, which is really cool. So you can use that navigation as well. You've got the hand, you know, kind of pan tool, right? So that's shift, middle click. And then you've got like a little camera button here, which is going to look through the camera and you just toggle that and it's back into perspective mode. So that's pretty cool. Attention, and then, attention. The alarm has been investigated. There is no cause for concern. Oh. Please resume normal duties. <laughs> Shimmy, you guys can hear that anyway. Um, so yeah. And, and then basically over here, you've got like, you know, your move kind of tools and stuff like that like you know really simple 3d stuff um there is other ways of doing that but i find them sometimes a little bit they're kind of intuitive but kind of not like you can hit like g and grab it and just kind of move it around but sometimes i find that a little bit difficult to kind of control for the things that i want to do so quite often i just sort of use these things like yeah so you can like rotate you can just hit like r and then rotate but it's always a bit like yeah it's just kind of rotating it freeform and then you can hold out you can do oh uh, yeah hold the middle mouse button then you can spin it around and yeah i don't know anyway there's all this stuff you can do watch the blender tutorials because he goes through all of that but just in a really like vanilla way of doing things you can just use these things here you can scale and kind of yeah do all the really simple 3d stuff that you kind of need to do for everything so um um yeah you can yeah you can do there's all you can hit the keys you can do all that right who cares that whatever <laughs> there's so many things there's like in blenders like te and kind of admire and 3d studio max and all that. there's always 10 million ways to do everything that yeah so just work out whichever way is best for you i don't really care how you move or rotate stuff or whatever just get, just more worried about your designing shapes that look good in composition right <laughs> okay so anyway just trying to give you like a really quick little you know guide on sort of using blender and kind of getting into it it's it's really simple well i wouldn't say that it's not simple but it's it's quite easy to use so it's good because it didn't used to be it used to be kind of a bit of a nightmare um okay so something that you're going to go do all the time is like if you hit tab on your keyboard tab that basically kind of goes into like edit mode right and then you can edit bits and pieces right which is kind of cool you can select and whatever right so you you swap between tab and tab <laughs> edit mode and object mode so up here you can just select down if you ever get kind of mucked up you know you can you can do that in here one other thing i'm going to set up really quick because i'm doing this all the time this is the sort of main reason i'm going to be here is that we're going to use the shader editor down here a lot so basically yeah when it comes in it's like got this animation like toolbar so i'm bloody you can move, move all these tabs around and bits and pieces whatever i'll just keep it once again just keep it pretty simple um, especially for today we can go into more advanced stuff as it goes along as it goes through making this image like yeah it will, it'll it'll get more complicated right uh, but so you just on this little editor here you just change it to shader editor and basically goes into like the world of nodes like oh my god getting into nodes break my brain <laughs> right but it's super powerful and that's how we're gonna do a lot of these light materials and lighting and all this kind of stuff right which kind of makes the blender way better than 3d code for, for that kind of stuff so <clears throat> the other reason why i'm using blender is because like you can kind of just slap on textures and stuff you can texture stuff really simple you don't have to uv do all this stuff which once again is just like oh my god i gotta go get substance painter and uv stuff and blah 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 it's like i just want to paint an ancient temple <laughs> right so yeah if, if you're like kind of technical and you like doing that stuff it's good go for it everyone's sort of wired a bit differently with things they like to do so um yeah once again i'm just showing you like my kind of process for you know how i'm going to make these kind of images right so um yeah you've got that okay so you've got the shade editor you kind of got your general navigation you got your kind of like editing tools over here right and you've got kind of like tab we'll swap between edit mode object mode right let's go to the next step let's go shift a 
shift a and basically shift a is you're gonna you get just get used to that key those keys shift a because basically anytime you want to add something in 3d code that's what you're gonna do so shift a is like add and basically uh we can just put in like a plane right and you can see like it would just sit there right and then you can just be like s oh just drag it out and s just keep s just keep dragging out you know and then you can put it wherever you want and blah 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 right so on and so on and so forth um this floor kind of thing gets really annoying really quickly just we got lines everywhere i don't really need them so what i do here is uh in this little shows overlays option you got a triangle there uh i just click on that and turn off the floor obviously like it's good to have the grid on um because that's kind of pretty useful um but yeah i just turn off that floor because it kind of gets in the way it's a bit annoying so yep um so that's kind of that that's how you can make a plane and how you can you know shift a mesh cube and you can make a cube right and then you can you know scale it right you can do all that stuff you can yeah do like yeah all sorts of things and if you're not sure on how to scale you know just use these controls here are always fine you know that's pretty easy to use there's way other faster ways of doing that in blender but you know if you're kind of not the real the real easy way of doing it is just controlling those things there so yeah so pretty quickly we've sort of that's pretty much how you you know just kind of get your way around uh blender from the start we're quickly going to go past some of that stuff but um yeah let's just kind of get into it right so i guess the way i'm going to sort of like try and show this stuff is just by getting into it and showing you guys how we're going to kind of lay this out so okay let's go back back a few steps so now i kind of need to get all of this stuff into blender right so now i also know that there is like a um there's like a 3d coat to blender um bridge <laughs> bridge bridge right that kind of connects the two together and you can but too complicated right I'm just gonna once again keep it really simple just because in case you're using some other software to do this like if you were in zbrush or whatever then you can do it the same kind of way that i'm doing now right which is basically exporting either fbx files or obj's so obj's and fbx are kind of like the the um the a default 3d file type that can be shared amongst any program right which is which is really cool so i guess the thing is what i want to do is I, I just want to get all these bits kind of into blender and then i can start arranging them so um there's a few things i've done here that i kind of don't need so i only need one of one of these pieces and then we'll start you know blocking this out again so um what i'm sort of going to do is just go through and um oh sometimes when i hit h on some of these things it takes a while it takes a while 3d coat has to warm up <laughs> it just warmed up apparently um so what i'm going to do is what am i going to do <laughs> Just gonna hide all these things first and then we're just gonna bring them in like one at a time um, the cool thing is that I, I know that I only need one of these columns I just kind of put that all together so you guys can kind of see you know how that looks um, so what I might do is let's start off with one of these columns right and I'm just gonna go so in 3d code just file uh, export and selected objects now i've only got the column selected so that's all it's going to kind of uh that's all it's going to export so that's pretty cool um so let's just go into um twitch stream all right 3d code and let's make a new folder exports all right let's call this uh All right, I want to export that. And sometimes I don't really know why, but sometimes a 3D coat freaks out and it won't bring up this dialog box. I don't know why. It just just keep 
just go like file export selected and just keep doing it until this dialog bo box pops up if this box doesn't pop up it will just export out like a one kilobyte file for some reason i don't know but it does happen to me from time to time so I'm just saying that's something that happens so you need to have this dialog box pop up and basically in here what i want to do is i want to um so the current poly count of our little pillar is like 4.7 million polys <laughs> now if we start exporting all of this stuff into blender and like going nuts in blender and creating a whole city our computer is going to die very very quickly so what i'm going to do is i'm going to change that like way down Let, let's try 95 percent right and and this poly count is going to drop down to like 235 thousand instead of 4.7 let's even try like 98 percent right and then it's like 94 thousand poly so it's kind of shrinking it down to to quite a bit right let's, so let's try 98 and just see how it goes let's go okay it's going to take a little bit of time to process depending on your computer sometimes it'll take longer than others um sometimes it will freeze and break <laughs> hopefully not all right um and then i'm going to go back into blender all right, and then I'm just going to go um, file, import. Uh, so it comes up as a wavefront.oj. So wavefront used to be an old 3D program. Um, wavefront, and then basically I just want to, do, 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 where do I want to go? Uh, 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 yeah, we're almost there. I'm going to Twitch. stream this one three coat exports all right and now there's like a dot mtl file which is like a material file but we don't need to worry about that we just want to import this this column all right and we just go okay and it's going to load a bit and then like oh my god it's over there and disappears and what the hell is going on with blender i don't know what's happening <laughs> All right, what's happening is basically like, this is the same principle across every 3D program that I've ever used, is basically like you have like a near clip plane and a far clip plane. It's basically like how far the ca camera can kind of see. So in Blender, basically like when you first open it up, this, there's this little tab here with the arrow, right? And when you first start, it's not open, but pretty much the first thing you have to do is like, is open that up and then it's up the whole time right so um so basically if we go into view um you can see here that the end clip plane so basically how far the ca camera can see is a thousand meters so what i do is just go zero 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 just add some add me some zeros and now if i zoom out yay right it's not like disappearing so it's basically just telling the 3d program that well we need to just see like way further and you can't even get it when you zoom in too far but it's 0.01 of a meter so we should be okay right um but this is like really gigantic <laughs> so when it comes in from from 3d code it's like gigantic but hey what's cool is can you guys all see this check out this even all the like stenciling stuff we did and everything is all kind of like coming in like yeah cool that's awesome so yeah pretty cool right because remember like we decimated this kind of way down and it's still yeah it's it's pretty good right so yeah it's pretty cool so what i want to do first is just like kind of get this into a realm of normality which is yeah um, is kind of like shrinking this way down right because otherwise um, it's just going to be gigantic and kind of hard to hard to sort of deal with so yeah and you can do it to whatever sort of size you kind of want there's probably like a good way of like knowing um, item you know like how big these things are in like meters and stuff scale so I guess that's like meaning it's like 11 meters I'm guessing so you know like it's probably good to kind of yeah keep a general you know vibe of that kind of stuff I'm not gonna get too like hung up on that because we just I'm never really gonna pay attention to it it's more just yeah the fact of wherever that is kind of sitting um, but yeah so one thing that I will notice is that the location gets a bit kind of weird of this like kind of transform thing so if I get this kind of in the middle like my object in the middle and you can be sort of rough because it's not too crazy but then i hit control a control a and we change that location then that little gizmo will just um snap back to kind of the center 
which is then pretty cool. So we can just like, you know, centralize that thing. There's probably other ways of doing that, but um, that's my ghetto way of doing that. <laughs> right. So, um, so this is cool. We're starting to, you know, plug that in. So, whoa, 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 whoa. so that's um, great. So um, one thing to notice is that <clears throat> this object here, basically when you bring things in from 3D code, they're just like really big. So I want to, it's going to like screw some things up later on if I keep that kind of scale. So especially if we start like decimating things and stuff in, um, in Blender, which you can do as well, right? So there's ways of doing that too. But we don't really need to do that for now. This will be fine. But um, I want to change the scale. So basically like I go control A and click scale, right? And what will happen is, see we're in item over here and that then changes the scale back to like one. So basically it kind of like resets the whole like scale of stuff. So it basically tells Blender that it's not like a gigantic object object that we've scaled down. It's now like this is this is the size that we kind of that we kind of want it to be. So um uh yeah, so I guess it's still saying it's I guess that's like the height, right? Yeah, so it's saying it's twenty three meters high. It's probably a bit big, right? But anyway, well let's go from there. <laughs> um all right, so and we'll just relate everything. To, to this what we kind of what we kind of do so I'm going to go back to the 3d coat all right and we just need to do it's a bit of a painful process now um, but yeah just need to go through and do that for everything um, so <clears throat> um, there might be some bits where like this here I probably can just do as like one piece how are those other bits so what I might do is because I've only got like these things like visible let's like right click and just go merge visible all right just gonna do some loading the size doesn't necessarily oh you mean like as in does it make the render take ages um, no, I, I, I don't think that matters too much. It's more like when we're doing, going to do materials and stuff. So yeah, if you're working on crazy big or crazy small, it's a bit of a pain in the ass to get the materials right like, later on. So yeah, that's why I kind of want to do that. So <clears throat> I just going to go back here and I can see there that now this, this one's just on here and that door we can just, um, I'm just going to delete that one. I don't think I need that. We'll just have this piece here. So I'm just going to go um, file, export, selected objects, um, main uh, window. I just always make it like 001 or something just in case like there's some other things that I kind of want to do to this. I think that it's saving. <laughs> cool. <laughs> it just crashed. Great. Thanks, 3D Coat. Uh, oh, no, it didn't. It's there. It just disappeared. I don't really know why it did that. Anyway, okay. So let's make it 98. Should we even try 99? Maybe we could, hey. 99. Why not? Let's try it. Okay. Loading, 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 exporting. This is going to be pretty cool. This like step kind of take is a bit boring and it's going to take a while, but um, you will see once we start getting this stuff into Blender and adding a few textures and probably be able to even show you how to make some terrain and stuff, it will be uh, will be starting to look pretty pretty cool pretty quickly. However, the other thing is like I may have to go back into 3D code and kind of design more bits up, but we'll see. <clears throat> um, 
So just asking, yeah, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Like, so the question is like, does it help with the realism in the Blender engine? Would there be a difference if the whole scene was? I, I think it's just a matter of like, well, if your whole scene is scaled down, then you need to scale down all the textures and everything, so it all just needs to kind of look right. But if you get it kind of like, because we're going to use like Quixel mega scans and stuff, so they're kind of set to like a real world kind of scale. So if things are kind of close, it just makes it a bit easier. That's all. So yeah, but you'll see. It, it'll be alright. Um, all right, so we've got that one, we've got the column, we've got this one here, I don't even know what this is, let's just call this like a base piece or something, uh, file, oh, we've got a new follower, welcome, um, export selected objects, <laughs> what do I call this, base piece, base piece, Zero zero one. It's gonna be a lot of weird naming stuff. <laughs> Probably the, even when I get into Blender, it doesn't really matter. Just create all collections and stuff. We'll show you guys how to do that. Yep. So reduce this down to like uh, um, this is Cody Foreman. Shouldn't you be doing work, Cody? Hey. <clears throat> anyway, it's still work work time, isn't it, in the US? All right, let's get this guy here. File export. Giant temple. All right, and I realize that someone probably coming into this um, stream, um, <laughs> someone kind of coming into this stream right now, it's probably like, what is he doing? Just sitting here exporting out pieces. But yeah, obviously, obviously you can watch the streams back and kind of go through, uh, go through uh, everything. All right. Um, so that one. Go. Now I know this was attached to like another piece here. Oh no, it was that up there. Nope, that one. Nope. Oh, I don't know what I did. Anyway, all right, let's just export this out separately. File export front door. <laughs> All right. All right, what else we got? Don't need that. Uh, we want these spires. So let's just, we just want one of these. But these are a bit lame actually. We probably need to fix these up, but anyway. Uh, export. Uh, some spire. All right. Okay. All right. We're getting there. We almost got these pieces. Yeah, and then we can start. Now we're getting all this together. This little spire, and then. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I should export this out. Hey. <laughs> uh, it's a cube. <laughs> I reckon we might be able to manage doing that bit in uh, in Blender, hey? We'll see how we go. Um, all right. Let's have a look. Ah, uh, Bradley, we're inclusive of everyone, even past students. Um, <laughs> uh, t -t 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 all right. Let's go back into Blender, hey? Um. And just start trying to put this together. I'm just thinking, what do I need to? I'm just going to. What, what, what do I need to do here? It'd be good if I knew what it looked like. <laughs> All right, so it looks like this. I'm just going to do a. Let's just do a little. Uh, All right, let's just do a print screen of this. Let's go into Photoshop and. Oops, right buttons please. All right. 
Uh, what I might do is uh, just don't. Uh, yeah. Okay. Save. Yeah, I don't mind. I just merged that bit together, but that's a good. <clears throat> so, like I said, with this queue, we may need to go back in and kind of, you know, just make that a little bit nicer as we move forward. But we'll see as well, because um, because we may kind of get into Blender and be like, oh, we can't even see those details, so it doesn't really matter. So I'm just going to put this on my other screen, just so I can see that layout of um of the uh, design in 3D code there and go back into Blender. All right, and now we're just gonna like kind of export all of those bits and pieces in. I'm just gonna delete these. So um, just hit delete, that'll delete. Um, if you don't have a delete key on your uh, keyboard, you can hit X and X will delete as well. So that's sort of another way of doing things. Um, um, okay, let's go file import and just start bringing in these these kind of pieces so I've got to uh, let's bring in this base piece yep they're all massive <laughs> they're all massive all right but whatever we'll just I'm just going to kind of get these all in first file import uh, base piece column, we did that one, front door, front door, file import, obj, front door, giant temple, import, after a while you kind of like, you, you sort of get a sense of how to scale this stuff, right? Uh, just as you kind of like, yeah, importing that stuff. Um, oh, what am I doing? Thinking about too many things at once. Oops, cancel, file, import. <laughs> All right, uh, we've got the main window. Let's import that in. It's gonna take a little while, just shrink it down. All right, but once again, like, yeah, it's pretty cool. Like you can see, getting those details in there and everything, right? It's on that. That's the back of it. <laughs> There's the front. But yeah, I mean, you can see that the, those details. We're not going to worry about this yet. Um, so import, OBJ, main window, small spy, and then like that. You know, it hasn't taken too long. We're starting to get. Oh, just do a bit of that. that. All right. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to start putting these pieces together and I need to um, not forget that um, that I need to like rescale these things. So um, yeah, let's not forget that bit. All right. <laughs> uh, so I've kind of got my column there. So that's sort of what I want to, what I want to kind of play with. So I need to make this piece here quite a bit smaller. And I've got my where my plane go, so I'm just going to click on my plane here, and I just want to let's let's make this a lot bigger and kind of let's just start. You know, that's that's my ground plane, right? So that's where we're going to kind of get you know just base everything from for the for the time being. So let's go back to this guy here, all right? And just move it up. Remember, I said like that if that locator. You know kind of gets a bit weird you can you can kind of reset it so if you just you know like put it in the middle you know and like I say it can be like rough you just go uh, whoops control a go location and it will just kind of reset that little gizmo there which can sometimes be pretty pretty good so yeah we're just gonna this will be sort of what I'm starting to base everything off so yeah just using those controls there and just just putting that into the ground um, and then what do we have I see so I had one of these 
columns kind of like Oop. the sin in here. Just seeing where that kind of like intersects. Let's move this like shader editor down the way there. So it's like somewhere there. And sort of in there and then got to get that sitting sitting in here and it's probably like we just need to scale this down a little bit and let's try and get this working in a nice little spot Making that a tiny bit bigger. Just making sure it's not cutting through any bits kind of too weirdly. And I like it sort of over overlapping a little bit there. All right, and then what I'm going to do is so another shortcut as we go through, we'll just keep going through all these shortcuts and stuff. Um, I know we'd like the Blender Guru. You can, if you go on his mailing list, he sends you like a little PDF with all the shortcuts, which is like really cool. So if I go Shift D, Shift D will basically duplicate that item. So very cool. So yeah, let's just undo that. Let's go Shift Shift D, and that is click because I want it to be in the same spot, and then I can just boop boop boop, just move that across, right? And get it to fit wherever I kind of want it to be so that's cool and then what I want to do with these two is I want to like make a collection basically like you know uh, groups in Photoshop so I just like those two things right click um, right click move to collection new collection columns okay and and now those columns are kind of in a collection which is really cool because then we can you know just hot it just you know hide all those layers which can get kind of confusing sometimes so we've got that <clears throat> the other thing I'm going to show you really quick is that you can um, there's some pretty cool ways to kind of get this looking get this render not even render just the viewport looking a little bit cooler so if we just click the little triangle here um, let's see if we do this so if we go change this to flat and then it looks kind of bad <laughs> but if we turn like shadows on and we kind of like ramp that up a bit oh that's pretty cool and then you can you know you can have outline on or off uh, you can do like the cavity and then you can sort of you know have that toned down or ramp it up or whatever you kind of whatever you want to do right just to make that to your liking um, what else have we got here uh, don't want to do x-ray uh, Ground. Yeah. So yeah, anyway, that's pretty cool. That will just make it feel like a little bit cooler in the, you know, in the viewport, which is pretty cool. And you can see there, like we're getting all these details in, you know, from the 3D coat stuff, which is very cool, right? And this stuff's going to be fit, like quite a ways away, so it's just going to pick up in the, pick up in Blender pretty nice, I think. So yeah. Um. All right. Let's just keep getting these these bits working. So I know I want the front door, wherever that's gone, somewhere down there. So this is where that what I'm talking about this locator thing is kind of getting a bit uh, kind of gizmo. So we just go Control A, location, yay! All right. Now I got to remember I got to kind of like write write a note to myself to remember about the scale of stuff. As in, just to fix all of that. So this kind of sits under here. Alright, we just make sure that kind of like goes into there. But you can see how quickly this sort of starts to come together. We had to do lots of legwork to get to this point, right? But yeah. But yeah, 
Where are we getting there? Okay, what else we got? Uh, oh, got this. There's some back bitty. This bit. This bit. Oh. Yeah, where'd you go? It's wider than that main. Oh, we'll do that. That one. So we just want to make sure that we're kind of lining that up in the middle. Kind of fuck around with all these things as we go forward, but yeah, I'm just thinking about where is this where this kind of sits. It sits somewhere there, so I've got to I've got to muck around with that other that other cube. The one that I didn't bring in. <laughs> uh, anyway, so that one in my 3D code, that one kind of goes in there, in there somewhere. Alright, and then I had this guy, and he kind of sits out a bit. Something like that. And then let's move this guy here. Just so it's not like cutting through, it'd be kind of weird. All right, cool. I think that's kind of cool in that. <clears throat> yeah, I'm just like just thinking about the scale and stuff. So let's move that. Just so it's not doing weird stuff with that roof there. That one comes through there. Yeah, cool, cool. Okay, that's good. Now the other thing is I had like another cube in here, so this is gonna this is probably gonna mess this around a bit, but let's go <clears throat> shift A. Alright, and then I want a cube. So it's cool, it's just there. Let's just hit S, make it bigger. All right now this cube sat behind sits like in the middle of those guys in the middle of those ones and we need to fit like our my kind of temple spires on there so something like that so I might have to mess around with all these things just a touch right so maybe this one here like now I can push this one back if I just have that oh, tiny bit have this one, so it comes through there. This one here, it's coming back there, and then we just move this. So everything you do sort of get a bit of a domino effect, right? But that's okay. that's okay. So that's cool. And then let's just get these little uh, these spires here, just working. Um, I'm just going to move that into the middle because that's kind of pretty wacky to whack over there. So let's just do a bit of that. That. Do that. Control A, location. Now that thing's kind of in the middle. Now we can just do normal stuff. <laughs> Alright, and sometimes I'll just be like, geez, grab, get it in the right, roughly in the right spot. So we got that one there, and then once again the same sort of process where I want to put these like in a collection. Yeah, it's cool. Um, so so uh, Bradley asked a good question. Hey Simon, when you're trying to create some concept art, would you say you should? sketch some stuff down before you start searching for references so you're not influenced by the references well i think what you're talking about is you're talking about see uh, one of our instructors brian one he talks about this in a really good way you're talking about inspiration not references so my, my um interpretation of those two are slightly different so uh, as opposed to i think what you're talking about bradley so inspiration would be you know other people's artwork right so we use that as inspiration but references would be all of um, 
uh, all of this stuff, all right? You notice these are my references. You know, this stuff here, there was some other, probably some other better layers of things that I had, you know, right? So, all right, so these are my references. You know, inspiration is like other people's art and stuff, but I, would, I think the more experienced you get, the less you need to look at other people's stuff because you start building up your own sense of visual library, your own ideas of kind of what you want to do and stuff. And then when I look at real world reference, then I start to think about, oh, wait, what if, what if I change this like this? What about if I did this? Blah, 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 so on and so forth. Does that sort of make sense? So yeah, try to like, at the start, you really do need to look at other people's art because you've got to develop that sense of taste, right? Just what's cool, what's good, and you and you don't really have a visual library, so you kind of like, you're, you're riffing off what they're developing as their visual library. And then as you get more experience, you start like drawing more stuff and you get more comfortable with like, okay, these are how these shapes go, this is how I can kind of put this together. And then that way, then when I'm looking at references, it's like, no, I actually want to do that first. I want to look up references, come up with what it is I want to do, you know, and, and exactly do this process that I did. So, you know, looking at these references, just sketching out some rough, I just sketched these out, looking at these references and thinking about how can I sort of re reiterate some of these things, combine some of these bits together, you know, does that sort of make sense? And then I went through and then I'm really starting to design. So I'm like, okay, what, what the hell do these like basic, you know, bricks, blocks, you know, rough, rough kind of shapes, what do they look like? And then it's going through and kind of like going through that design process, which is going to take a while, right? And that's sometimes where students are like, oh, that is, this is hard. <laughs> it's like, yep. It's, it's hard, right? So going through that process, starting to develop things, the more, the better you get at drawing, the easier that kind of gets. Uh, even if you're doing like, even if you're more of a 3D modeler, um, yeah, just like that design process will take a long time to learn, right? So just keep working on it. At the start, you'll come up with crappy looking stuff. That's no good. And then you just, you know, keep developing it. And you can even see here, like I can't remember where we're at at the start, right? But, you know, as it goes along, these things get pushed more and more. And you can see like, even where we're at now, it's so different, right? From from that to to this, okay? But it's got that same kind of flavor to it. You know what I mean? It's 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 got... You can see where it's kind of you can see where it's coming from, right? It's pretty similar, but it's it's just starting to get more and more refined as we go on through this this uh, process. So I'm just noticing I want this to cut be a bit lower, so I get a bit of a nicer kind of break up there silhouette. So we've got this guy here. So I hope that answers that kind of question. Yeah, it's, everyone feel free um, ask any questions. So Shift D, click. All right, and then I can drag this one across over here. And there's like, there's a lot of automated ways to do stuff in, in Blender and some of the stuff I'm not always that sure about. So yeah, but I'm I'm learning. <laughs> All right, so move this to collection. Oh, move to collection, new collection, spires. Right, then I've got those, the, both of those selected, right? So shift. D, click, and then I just move them uh, back to wherever I want them. Um, yeah, you know, let, let's kind of go with this like longer shape here. That's pretty cool. Let's do that. We can, yeah, we'll see. I have to like kind of rotate this around, but anyway. I'll see what's going on here. So, got that. I really want this this shape here. Sorry, I'm just going to like kind of organize these shapes a little bit. Now, I shouldn't have um, duplicated those spies yet. I'll explain why in a sec. Anyway, whatever's, we'll just do that. But I want this bit of block to come out, right? So we get these, this shape in here. Right now, let's just move this one forward. That's okay. I think that's still going to look pretty cool just there. Yep. Cool. All right. So remember I said, don't forget about the scale. So I'm just going to go back here and just make sure I go control A, scale, control A, scale. I don't know if I can do this as like a one, select them all and do that. But anyway, don't need to worry about, oh, no, no whatever. That's fine. It's just a freak. So control A. Draw 
A, scale, control A. See, if I did that on the first one, I wouldn't have to do it again. Alright. A, scale. So, yeah, I think all of these things should be set to like 1 now. Let's do it on this one too, just in case. Um, no, I didn't do it to these, right? Oh, yes, I did. I've just shrunk them down. That's cool. As long as we're close, we're not like 0 0.00068, right? Which means that thing would be like gigantic. So it's okay if it's just, you know, if we're, if we're doing this a little bit out. So now I'm just going to duplicate these guys around. So got these. They're in like a collection already. So Shift D, click, drag them, these guys across, and just kind of get them, get them lined up. I just need to be near the base of that. Pretty good. They just overlap a bit on the edge. That's cool. All right. Let's just grab one of these. Shift D. And then I'm just going to grab and drag. It works pretty good, like the G and moving around. Like it's pretty cool. It gets everything like a pretty close spot. And then I just kind of arrange it from there. So I'm just going to make these guys. They need to be a little bit bigger. So we'll just kind of muck around with that. All right, that's pretty good there. Just make sure it's like not floating. Right there, we'll just like to tuck that in a little bit. I don't know if I want it. Maybe it just kind of like just shows through a little bit because that might just add a little bit of niceness to that shape there, which is pretty cool. All right, shift D, click, shift D, click, move across, getting them pretty close. And to be honest, it doesn't matter if they're like a tiny bit out because, you know, just adds to that non ha having everything exactly the same. <laughs> Oops, escape, shift D, click. Just click because then I can just move them, right? Oh, where's the. Oh, God, let's muck that up. Right, where is that? Move this across a bit more. Just kind of get it close to me in the middle. All right, let's go uh, Shift, Shift D, duplicate this, and I'll, I'll just start getting this. I, I want to get this to the point where it was where it was at in 3d code basically we're gonna have to like yeah do some stuff <laughs> do a bit of stuff stuff here in 3d code to get some of these bricks not just bricks oh, it goes up a little bit higher doesn't it there Cool. All right, so I moved that in before, didn't I? So we just need to move these guys back a bit. Just like shrink this down a touch. Yeah, that's cool. That's fine. D, click, drag on the red. Is it this one? Oh, I'll get it right one day. I'll get it right one day. Oh, whoops. Nope. Ah, shift. Wrong button. Sorry. That one? E. Try and line that up as best as possible. <clears throat> All right, so so that's pretty cool. That's basically what I had in like three D code. Right, this here. Right, this this kind of shape or composition of stuff. All of the stuffs. <laughs> so. Um, yeah, which is cool. So now basically like we've put this in, got this into like uh to Blender and it's kind of working. So let's save, hey. <laughs>
save as. Uh, not too much stuff. Twitch. Alright, let's make a new folder called Blender. Inside that folder, and what do we call this? Very exciting. Demo one. About a million demo ones. <laughs> I get a hit. Oh, hang on. What did I just do? Uh oh. No. Uh. Oops, I did that in the wrong folder. Uh, new folder. Blender. Yay. <clears throat> All right, so that's pretty cool. Now we're starting to now we're starting to get somewhere, right? Okay. So let's do like a few, what do we got? We got like kind of an hour to go. Let's do a few little fancy things now and get this kind of looking pretty cool. So I always like to, I'm impatient. I'm like you guys, just as impatient as you are. It's like, okay, let's make this not look like a gray thing in a 3D program, right? <laughs> so um, how do we do that? Well, the first thing is um, <clears throat> we want to get like a HDRI, right? So let me kind of go through this now. I'm, so the reason why I'm an R sometimes is because I, I did this for another class the other day. So I'm like, have I shown you guys this yet or not? <laughs> uh, I know I haven't, but anyway. Uh, so if we go to viewport shading, right? We kind of have this set like this and we can do various things here like um, add in, we can add in some like ambient occlusion and you know, making that like, oh uh, yeah. Yeah, you know, do some cool stuff. Yeah, right. It's pretty cool. But um, however, I want to do this in cycles, right? So, kind of at the moment we're like rendering this in Eevee, so it's kind of like the real time, the real time um, rendering system in in Blender, but. I think for any like concept art stuff, I don't even really see why you'd use that. Like, cause it always, it, it's not, it looks better in cycles, right? So just use cycles. <laughs> um, so, and with that, it kind of this ambient inclusion stuff and that kind of like doesn't quite work, right? So I'll, I'll show you how this will kind of happen. Um, so if I go into cycles, right? And I do this basically, Let's do it without that, right? The cycles turn ambient occlusion off. So just go like this, right? And then if I go into cycles, basically like it's this gray thing. Now um, we've got a light in here. Oops. So if we select this light, okay, we, we do have a light in here, but it's not doing a lot. It's a little tiny light <laughs> to put on there. So um, that's why um this thing is like not kind of looking like anything it's just because we don't have any lighting so it's not being lit by anything all right so first step is we want to get that kind of to work so if we go back into this setup here right let's go back into here and what i want to do is and, and you can go online search up like free hdris and you can get as many as your little hearts content right so if i go into this world tab here right so the red one go to world and you've got like background color strength so in in color we're going to click the little dot and we're going to change that to environment texture. So this is the easiest way to get your HDRI and you can do it in nodes and stuff, but you just do it here. Right? So if we go into open, um, uh, let's go to think where I've got these blender <laughs> uh, here. All right. So I've got like some, some HDRIs. Okay. Let's just, we'll just throw one in. Let's go. And, all right. And now we've basically got like a HDRI kind of working in here somewhere or other all right if we go into well this is basically so in in the shade editor you've got a couple of things you got object so if i click on an object it will bring up kind of the 
material, the shader for that, right? And then if I change this to world, it brings up kind of like what's happening in the world. So now what I can do is um, if I go up into here, into this little, so I'm in kind of the, the sh viewport shading tab. And if I come up here and click the little arrow, so same thing here when I click that arrow in the gray one, remember I could change settings. Same thing in here when we go to viewport shading, we can then change settings. And if we just turn on scene lights, scene world, oh yes. Right now we're, now we've got a HDRI in. Okay, and we're starting to like, not very well, but things are starting to get kind of lit by stuff, <laughs> all right? Now, if I, um, if I go into cycles now, all right, this is, this is, sorry, I'm not in cycles. Let's just go into like the kind of viewport shading rendered version. So this is kind of like the most, you know, high quality, um, you know, view that you can look at. So nothing changed there because it's basically working in EB. All right. So what you want to do is in this little TV box, <laughs> right, the render properties, um, uh, basically what you do is you can change this one over to cycles, right? And see it go, went kind of like, it went black for a bit and then kind of, yeah, started, started working. So, um, now what we can do is we can use the HDRI to light um, our objects. So for example, let's just go back into the world tab here, right? And instead of this industrial sunset one, let's change that to like one of these other, this one here, right? And can you see how like that just kind of changed all of a sudden? And you might be like, well, you know what, Simon, it's, it's not really, you know, we're not, it's not doing that much like you know whatever it's just making everything like look a little bit kind of pink but not really can't really see all this stuff that well yet so anyway we just need to adjust the hdri and things right so what i'm going to do here is like a bit of fiddling around with with this kind of stuff so if i hit shift a just like in um in making a cube right we just want to make a node so shift a we'll make like a new node and then we can go search and we want to type in mapping God, I got to remember all this stuff as well. All right, and then we go Shift A and we search and texture coordinate that one there. So we want to add these guys in. We want to plug in the generator to the vector just there, right? So generate to vector, and then we just want to plug the vector into the vector. Well, that kind of makes sense. Now, what's cool about this is now we can actually rotate the HDRI. So before, I kind of had like no control over this like HDRI image, but now we kind of do, right? So kind of in this Z, we can start maybe, you know, like typing in some different, some different kind of um, angles, right? Uh, yeah, sort of like you can drag it around as well, just by, just hold that and drag around. And it's gonna start sort of affecting, affecting this all a little bit differently, right? And sort of starting to add some lighting in and stuff like that, right? Which is, which is pretty cool. Um, the other thing is like it won't really quite work until we have some of these like materials going on. So um, yeah, and there's kind of like yeah, it's just this global lighting. Let's even see if we can like uh, for example, just let's go, let's make a cube. Let's make a big cube and then. <clears throat> oh. Let's see if we can start. Getting this to create some shadows, but what do we got going on here? going to change that you can change it from uh, CPU to GPU as well that will then that will then kind of render this with your uh, render that with your um, what am I getting at <laughs> render it with your video card all right so um, yeah, anyway let's delete this it's not working just yet we need to get like some materials and stuff on here so but that's how you kind of get that HDRI going You 
can see if we really then we change like the strength and stuff so make it like 2.5 Yeah, and maybe we just need these materials on here to, to work. Mm. Anyway, we'll do this in a second. Yeah, so there's not even a, there's not any material on here at all. Or some of these, yeah. kind of muck around anyway go show the materials I'm just like <laughs> just playing around um, all right <clears throat> all right and what you'll find is that when you change that over to um, when you change this over to cycles like you lose that um, you lose that mode of ambient occlusion so yeah you just kind of kind of muck around with the hdri and then we'll get like the we can get the sun working and i'll show you some other stuff where we can yeah like make it look really cool anyway let's keep going with this so um what's next let's just really like texture this really quickly just so we can get something going on. I'm gonna go back to, hang on, I just wanna go back into my Photoshop and look at this original thumbnail to see what it is I wanted to do, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. All right. So let's just, um, let's start just kind of texturing this really quickly, just a little bit here. So <clears throat> what I'm gonna do, Go into the, the Quixel bridge. Uh, Quixel bridge. So you can you can kind of plug think materials and stuff into Blender with one click, which is like very, very cool. Um, so basically what we do is look up, I'm pretty sure I've got like some sort of stone one in here, like you can you can download these and stuff, right? Um, and basically what you do is I gotta remember how to do this right so if we go into export settings basically like you set this to blender and then it has like a little um, a little script here so you just click copy right that'll copy this script and then to get this to work so it's a little bit tricky there's a few kind of steps you gotta go um, into your edit preferences and then you go into add-ons and then what you want to do is you want to go, whoop, sorry, didn't mean to do that. Add-ons. And then you want to go to install, right? And then in this installation bit, instead of this path, you just select that and then you, oh, just make sure that I did that, right? And then you uh, want to install this um, Megascans live link. So basically you just go install add-on, right? And then once you've done that, so that'll load in so but i've already done it so just yeah it'll come up like this you just click it and go install add-on if i go cancel then um let's type in mega scans right type in mega scans and you just basically need to tick it that it's working right now that's not the last step so you do that you've kind of enabled the the add-on and then i don't know why you got to do this but every single time that you open up the bridge live link with blender you need to go file import and you know you've done this right if you've got these two options down here mega scans plugin and mega scans import and then you have to click mega scans plugin it feels like nothing happens but it but it kind of did happen if that makes sense so um oh hang on just need to Thank you. 
Did I just kill the stream? I hope I did. Oh no, here we go. <laughs> Can you guys still uh, see and hear me and everything? Uh, oh, we're good. All right, awesome. Just everything disappeared on my screen. <laughs> But I think we're okay. All right. So, um, what was I talking about? Room bridge here. Yep. All right. So you've got to click that file import, and then Mega Scans plugin, and it will kind of look like it doesn't do anything, but it it kind of turns it, um, it turns it on. So basically, if we go back to bridge here, what's really cool is I just have these set to like 4K. Uh, make sure that we have like all these um down download. I'm just going to re-download this. All right. So you just want to make sure you have all of these, uh, all of these selected, um, because we're going to basically bring in all of these kind of options here. Um, all right, so let's bring this in. Let's bring this in. Bring this in. Okay, and um, and then what we want to do is just hit export. And when you hit export, it will just go export to Blender successfully, which is pretty cool, right? Also, like, I'll show you why this is also pretty cool. Let's just do this one up because we've got this here. Let's just go um, export, export like one of these rocks or whatever, and it will go export to Blender successfully. And it didn't. What's going on? Let's just try something here first. That one worked fine. Why didn't that one just come across? Maybe sometimes it, it, it like gets a bit funky with like, you have to like re-download these bits and things. Download settings. <clears throat> Basically like it'll import this whole thing just directly into Blender, which is pretty cool. I just want to show you this because it's awesome. Right, so let's just try it. Make sure export settings is like set to Blender. Yep, let's get export. There we go. All right, so for some reason, sometimes like I was working with this last night. I'm sure it was on this computer, um, but for some reason, every now and then you have to like re download it. But so when I click that export, you can see that you can see Blender behind here and it came in as a new like asset rock, right? So basically, like that's in there there's this huge rock <laughs> in here we're probably actually going to use this stuff later so it's kind of cool that's in here right so whilst you go here it's like oh yeah it, it's cool like whatever it looks like a rock and stuff that's pretty cool but it looks no different to our 3d coat stuff if i kind of click on this viewport shading oh yeah right so it basically like comes in as like textured you know all that kind of stuff right and you can like zoom in and it looks pretty realistic it's pretty cool and if we go to the cycles mode oh yeah look at that it's pretty cool that oh, looks pretty awesome so yeah so that is pretty freaking cool <laughs> all right let's go back a step <laughs> before I got too excited. Uh, so if we just go into this shader mode, so essentially we want to kind of start texturing all of this stuff. I'm just going to do it real basic just for now. So it's all the same thing. All right. So let's just start with this guy here. All right. How do we, how do we do this? Well, basically what you do is um, if you go into this tab here, this is materials. All right. Let's, let's turn that material off. So basically like it doesn't have a material at all now. And then uh, we just want to click, see this little icon here, the little arrow, just click that. And you'll see that the, the stone wall, that's the, um, that's the uh, texture that we imported from the, the bridge just a second ago, all right? So we're gonna add the stone wall, all right? And it's probably gonna update on here. And you're like, okay, that's cool. It's like doing stuff. The thing is at the moment, it's a little bit broken. So it's, it's kind of broken for what we wanna use. So we've got to go into a bit of node 
world for a bit don't don't stress out it'll be fine I'll just show you how to do this and it's easy to follow steps so we've got we've got this like specular one here we've got a gloss one here and they're all fine and we've got um, a we've got this one here now sometimes what will happen is um, this texture coordinate and mapping won't won't be in here won't be in the the node so you just grab them the other thing you can do is right go back to world so we added them in here into the world you can just grab them copy them right so just copy and then you can go back into your um, object right and over here like you can just paste them that work that way, yeah that went over here <laughs> it went right in the middle right so you can just paste them in right and that yeah that that'll just import those into the like this node setup I hope that makes sense hope that makes sense anyway all right so let's get back to this so there's a couple of things that are kind of busted when we first do this all right we've got the normal map here and this needs to go into the bump so uh, basically you just connect those two and then the bump will kind of work properly all right and the other thing is like can you see here um, how the texture is just stretching around the side of this object all right so we can fix that too right and this is why like th this part of blender is like super cool i'm i don't know i guess you can do this stuff in my i don't know how but um maybe uh but with we don't have to uv or do any of this stuff so if i hit a that'll select all these nodes and in here where it says flat i just hold alt and then change that to box and that will change all of them to box see how they all say box now uh, so if i undo that sometimes undoing things in blend takes a while but see where i'm flat so if i deselect off that and just change this one to box i have to go through and change them all right but once again if we just put that to back to flat hit a hold alt and then select box it will change all of them and you can see how that fixed that up straight away because now it's basically like wrapping the texture around as like a box shape so it's pretty cool it's like not 100 percent foolproof there's been some times where it's like i'm like oh this is annoying or the flat one works better as well um but yeah no pretty pretty cool so i was also going to change this uh let's just change this to change this one to Maybe this leg side one all right i'm just changing this hdri all right you can see how that changed it like quite a bit as well all right <clears throat> so we still don't have those lights kind of working you know like we haven't got you know shadows and things and stuff yet i'll show you how to do that but it's all okay we'll, we'll get this all happening so um what i want to do now is uh i've got this texture working actually I was going to just take everything, but I'll, I'll show you some stuff first, right? So if we, let's just try and get like a decent sort of looking shot of just this bit here. So I can show you. Um, should we set up a sun? I guess we can do that. So let's go shift. There's some other ways of lighting stuff, but we'll do it like this. Shift A, uh, light, sun. All right, and then we're going to move let's move this sun up and sort of like over over there where it kind of is I grab this guy here and like point that at where we want it to kind of go and then we can go into the sunlight and maybe make that like five and and this will kind of like start to work let's also just quickly add a material to uh, oops let's just make this the um just that for whatever for now all right uh, so maybe i'm just gonna oops what did i just do something's still there I'm just going to turn this off for a second. We've got light happening, but let's just turn that off. And let's go into cycles first and see what's kind of going on now. There we go. So basically, like, once you have those materials kind of working, then it'll start, like, kind of casting the shadows on there. All right. So already, like, it's looking pretty, 
pretty cool right let me go back to you and show you this um show you in this hdri if we go back to world all right and then if i just change this sorry i know it's a bit hard to see but if i change this number around in the z so i've made that like a hundred that's going to change that shadow can you guys see that so make it like 250 right so it's gonna it's gonna change it around so you can sometimes computer breaks when you kind of do this but it's basically spinning the hdri around right to light your scene in whichever way that you kind of see fit so yeah so you can play around with that and to your heart's content right and then um and then you've got your um uh then you've got your sun so if i turn that on right that, that's going to kind of light everything up like crazy and kind of change some of these shadows around so you kind of have to think you know got to kind of mess around with that to get to work but let's maybe change if we've got the sun here i think i think we'll just leave this for now but anyway because we'll muck around with this later anyway it's still kind of breaking it because we need to get this kind of lined up but anyway it's all good we'll just use like the hdr up now all right now what i want to do here is let's just ignore the ground <laughs> we'll fix that later but if we go into here it's probably a little bit hard to tell because we're kind of in the shadow let's get it a little bit kind of in the light now yeah. too much <laughs> Dirty. I'm always like dicking around with this stuff. <laughs> um, so you can see here that like um, the material is probably feeling a bit big, right? So you know, like it's kind of making it feel a bit kind of like toy shaped in some of this. So what I want to do here is like this gets a little bit tricky, but you know, kind of like bear with me, all right? Because it's it's good once you get your head around it. I remember it sort of took me a little while just to work it out so you can fuss around with settings in here so if i change it back to object um all right you can you can kind of fuss around with the settings in the texture uh, sorry in the mapping to get the scale and stuff right but there is kind of like a bit of an easier way to do it so but it's a bit of a process right so what i want to do first is uh go shift a and i want to make a new cube so I just make a cube and we're just gonna like kind of stick it in this random place just here let's go back into uh let's go back into like kind of uh the th this viewport shader mode because like when, when you're doing it in this other one it's just like re-rendering stuff all the time so whenever you move it around it's like oh now i've got to re-render all this right whereas in this one here it's kind of like the real time sort of version it doesn't look as pretty but it's um yeah good enough right so what i want to do is i want to make a cube here that we're just going to kind of hide but we're going to use this to control the the scale of the texture right so if i go back to my object here what i want to do is i want to uh remove we want to remove this right so when i get rid of that it's going to make all of that disappear but we want to change this to object right and we're going to put the object into the into the vector and then what i do is in object you can see how it says object down there you click little color picker <laughs> right and then basically just select the that cube all right and this will change and blah 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 so now what will happen is we can use this cube to scale the texture which is pretty cool so if i hit s on here you will see the texture starts scaling up hey so it's pretty cool so it was kind of like really massive before but we sort of want to work out and sometimes like it's a bit kind of hard to tell like exactly what it's doing but yeah and you can this will kind of like control where that texture is all right can you see it's also moving on the ground as well so i'll explain why that's happening a bit in a second too but let's just not worry about that for now let's just try and get this sort of scale working a little bit better um so let's go back into cycles and let's see what's happening now. Okay. 
and you know this is probably one of the things that you got to kind of play around with for ages I said I don't know if it's too big or too small I think it has to be way bigger right so I go back in here oh not that one back into this one Oh, got a gigantic cube. <laughs> now my cube my cube is blocking off everything all right so now it's kind of like yeah it's all going gross all right So yeah, you just got to find that kind of sweet spot for it. And you can play around with some of these other settings and stuff in here as well. But let's try to get it right. All right. <clears throat> Now what we can do is, uh, is um, you can so so this is like these materials are kind of like all linked together because I um, I made them both the same, right? So the way that you stop that is so I've clicked on my plane here, and essentially this little see this little two. We want to turn that off because basically what that means is it's uh, linking these two together. So if I turn this one off on the ground right so now when i go back to controlling this cube no, fail <laughs> uh yeah so whoops i need to change this back to the generated one so let's just do that one just go back to generated right and that'll just make it that ground plane right so i can also change the scale like in here so we can make it like a so I'll show you guys how you do this. So if it's not working the other way, you can do it like this as well. So you can make one five, you know, five. This is just gonna make it like really big. Five. Sometimes hard to get the so you think that like if one is kind of sometimes hard to get it going the other way, because you kind of think it's like uh point zero two. Oops. Zero point zero two. You know, and now you've got that like it's kind of much smaller, right? So it's just repeating all the time. So, yeah, and maybe I mean that's kind of looking better in there. We'll, we'll just try it. Let's just try this for a sec. Let's see if we can get this working better. You can like copy that. This is like way too small. Zero point five. Cool. I think that might be looking better. Let's just hide that cube anyway. Sometimes that that cube thing sort of works really well, and other times it doesn't. You got to kind of play around with those things. Uh, that's cool. Anyway, so one thing that we're probably like 
that I'm like, okay, we're going to have to do this at some point is probably chop these bits up so that we can kind of like texture them differently so that, you know, the, the, <laughs> it's not all stone, like the roof is something different or whatever, but we'll, we'll get to that. But you can see how it's pretty cool, right? Where it's just, it's heading in a pretty good direction and looking like a stone, you know, kind of material and stuff. Pretty cool, right? So it's pretty cool. Um, <clears throat> All right, one other thing we could do, we'll try this with this. I don't know how we're going to go, but let's see. Is let's add a bit of displacement uh, to this. So when you're doing like rocks and things like that, you can make it so that it like has bump and then it also like displaces the geometry. So you kind of can't really do that in Eevee, but you can do it in cycles. And I'll show you how to kind of set that up. This may break this, but we'll, we'll just see. <laughs> Make it crash the computer too, hey? Let's just save. <laughs> right, but once we get this right for one bit, then we can kind of texture the whole thing and it'll, it'll come together really quick. And like next week, I'll kind of go over how we can do more and more of this stuff and get it looking, you know, very cool. All right, so what I want to do here is like, let's make a displacement kind of a texture component here. So I just go Shift D, which is duplicate, just like uh, the geometry, same thing, all right? We kind of add that in here. And then we want to go um, Shift A, because we want to add a node, search, displacement. Displacement, add that in. And we just want to drag this guy across. Sorry, I'll make this screen bigger for a sec so that you guys can see. Perhaps if even if you want to take a screenshot of like how I've set this up. So you can kind of like learn how to do it. All right, so then we've got our displacement here. We've got a material output here. All right, and then what we want to do is we want to connect the vector to the vector, if it's easy. We want to collect, connect the color to the height. And at the moment, this is just like a bump, so it's not working. So what we need to do is you need to click on this folder. And basically what's really cool is it just opens up the folder where, where all this stuff is saved. So then what we want to do is like you've got displacement.jpg, which is like 1.8 meg, and then you've got like a displacement.exr file. So you want to um, select that file, right? And go open image, cool, all good, all right? And then we want to plug the displacement into the displacement. And then you're like, ah, oh, sweet, Simon. So nothing happened. And man, this is meant to be like kind of cooler and it's not doing anything. Why is it not doing anything? Well. What you have to do is there's a couple of extra kind of little steps you got to do here. So basically what it's saying is that you, you've now kind of uh, plugged a displacement node in here, which is cool. But Blender needs to be told that like the material actually has to calculate the displacement, which can sometimes make renders take a long time. <laughs> However, this will be okay. So um, what you want to do is if you come down to, so you're in your material, this is in the material setting, we're in our material here with our nodes, go to the material setting, right? And then you come down and under um, settings. So basically when you go into settings there, in surface, you'll see it says displacement, it's got bump only. So it's just bumping a little bit, but you want it to displace and bump so displacement and bump and when you click that this is like all going to kind of change now it didn't change like drastically sometimes what you find it'll like add all these like spiky spiky details to things right um and you'll be like oh god i've got to like change i've just got to like bring that displacement down a bit so in this case it is doing it i can see it like you can kind of see how it's like bumping out the material a bit um, which is cool and it's probably about right for what we need it's just enough to like make it feel more realistic right but what you do is you change these settings around so if I make this uh, let's hang on <laughs> let's save let's do a file save as and let's make this do three two <laughs> oh <clears throat> So save, and the more of this sort of crazy stuff you do, the kind of longer it's going to take to save. All right, let's change this to like three. All right, can you guys see that? How this like starts to really change? Let's make it like five. Yeah, see how it's like really popping out? Where like in some instances, that'd be really cool, right? In this, maybe not so 
good but you can see how it's actually starting to change the edge of the geometry there so like that that's how the displacement works so like it's pretty awesome obviously like you can see here that's it's kind of making it look starting to look a bit kind of wonky so that's not really what we want right but if i change this back to one i think that's looking pretty cool so it's like displacing um a bit but um but not stacks right which is which is perfect so it's looking really good in some of these sections but however like i said i'm probably going to have to split some bits and pieces up right to kind of make all that you know cooler and stuff but anyway let's keep moving forward because not too much time to go so what i want to do here now is like add this material to like kind of everything right so let's let's kind of do that uh i might um Oh, whatever we can mark around with the light stuff in a minute so let's go back to this mode because the this viewport shader is that what it is shader viewport shape what is it material preview okay and this is uh rendered so when you're not in ev this stuff kind of changes around when you move to cycles it changes oh, i didn't actually show you um edit preferences system all right so that's where you can um have this set up for your video card or the um or your processor right so yeah obviously it depends on your computer and stuff sometimes like on a laptop it, the video card's not great and so you know whatever just use whichever one kind of works better but then you basically just go up in here to the little tv and you can either have it set up to cpu or gpu so another thing i found is when i'm rendering like really heavy stuff it like I don't know if this is a general blender bug and some of you guys might know more than i i do but it'll like crash every single time when i'm trying to render something complex with the video card but then if i do it with the cpu it works fine <coughs> excuse me so um just have a play around with that anyway we're we're a long way away from from that <laughs> at the moment so yeah um so yeah i hope you guys are kind of finding this kind of fun and interesting and yeah some cool stuff kind of going on so let's just quickly um add that same material to everything just so they're not you know this is not how it's going to look but uh just so they're not um um uh you know all basic materials so essentially what i want to do is just select everything so i want to select uh, sorry let's do this simply first right i'll just do this simply so say for example i want to um, texture this big shape up here I select that one then I hold shift and click on the one that's already textured hit control L and go materials and voila it'll add that material to the other bit you can't do it the other way around if I select that one and then go like that and then go materials it adds it'll swap them around all right or just not work I don't know why that I think because there's no material on that other one <laughs> anyway so if i just start selecting these so now i can go through and just basically like select all of these pieces that one that one that one that one that one that one that 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 there's some other little guys around here hold down shift each time hold down shift and then the last one i select is that one Control L, materials, and we're gonna wait a sec. Ah, oh, cool, and they're all done. Uh, don't ask me why these ones didn't work. Maybe it's because they're in the collection. Hmm. Why are you going? Doesn't make sense. Uh oh hmm. uh object zero come on it's like saying it is weird let's get let's go have a look in cycles anyway you get the idea we're getting there <laughs> big giant rock ancient stone temple <laughs> cool so they're doing something <laughs> what's going on they're doing something but yeah anyway <laughs> um 
so this is just going to look like one big giant rock thing right but yeah. <laughs> uh, we'll have to kind of fix that but if we go into world let's kind of just muck around that lighting a little bit all right if we get it you kind of sort of want to have it matched up to the HDRI bit so then that sort of works pretty well like where these these kind of shadows are coming from uh, one, oh, you can... but yeah I mean you guys can see it's starting to starting to look pretty cool right <clears throat> I have to sort these guys out. I don't know what's going on with them anyway. We'll sort them out. Um, what else? Okay, so something else you can do to like really muck around with that kind of lighting and shadows and things is yeah, you, you can do this right where it's where I had that cube. All right, so you'll probably get where I'm going with this, but if I This cube up here. So we can kind of like create shadows with like cube clouds. <laughs> Trust me. All right. So, and then yeah, you just move it around to where you want it. So get a bit of a Takes a little while. Now we can do all sorts of like, you can kind of make noise planes for cloud shapes and, oh, hang on, sometimes it's easier. Excuse me, sneezing. Just want to rotate this around a little bit so it's like not um not yeah on the straight and narrow kind of thing. Bit by bit. It's kinda of cool if you have like a bit in shadow and a bit, you know. You know, you know, you know. You guys know what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> Oh, we're inside a cube. <laughs> you get the idea, right? We're getting there. We're starting to get there. Okay, so let's stop being totally uh, silly about these things and start kind of blocking this out a little bit. So I want to think about my composition, right, of what I've got in... Uh, I'll turn that. Just turn that guy off. Turn that cube off. Just putting everything in shadow there. But um, so when I think about the comp composition and start like kind of getting this relatively blocked out. So I'm going to show you some other little tricks in in Blender here. So if I go back here, um, what I might do is even just put this on my other screen. just so we can see what's going on here all right and I'm going to start adding in some uh, some kind of like uh, landscape geometry and stuff right so once again like this is pretty cool so there's a plugin in blender now I've got to remember what it is um, edit preferences and if I go to add-ons and let's turn that off And it's this one here. So this add mesh a dot n dot t landscape, right? Um, that is in Blender already. So all you need to do is um, 
search for it in Blender. So just type in a.n.t and it will pop up and you just need to activate it, right? It's really cool. And basically what that does is, um, how do we show this without kind of being crazy? Um, so then we go shift A, right? And you'll know that you activate it properly if down the bottom you have a little landscape option. So you click on landscape, all right? And you've got this, it's another noise tool, right? So basically you've got like this kind of setting here um, and and basically um, this is kind of, it's really small, but it's creating like a landscape here. <laughs> Just trying to show you guys this, all right? So yeah, it's just creating like a bit of geometry in here, which is like pretty cool, right? So, and you can play around with all these different settings and stuff. So um, if I just go uh, sort of hard without hiding all of this, but if we just go shift A mesh landscape, uh, every time I, I kind of need to hide all this stuff. I have this, this, all right, sorry, just trying to do this so you can see it a little bit better. It's really small. Um, so let's just delete that one. Shift A, mesh, landscape. And then you've got all these like, on the top here you've got all these little operator presets and you can change like it to below. zoom in anymore anyway uh, you've got like yeah below and because I've got some of these things turn it looks a little bit strange um, cliff default yep and you can kind of yeah go through it you can change all this stuff yeah it's like you know muck around with all these things really cool though so we can make this like Yeah. Oh, that one. All right. And then yeah, you can change around like kind of all the settings and go through all that stuff, but it's like it'll make stuff like really quick. You can make a planet. <laughs> you can also make uh a rock, which is pretty useful. All right. Uh you can make all sorts of stuff. So, uh, yeah, volcano, right? And then you just like scale them up, and it's really cool. So, yeah, we're just gonna play around with just some, um, maybe let's go default large, zooming out, <laughs> all right? Um, and Um, maybe. I'm just randomly playing around with things. I just want a bit of terrain that's kind of not too crazy. Maybe 
12. <laughs> Basically just trying to get a bit of really generic. <laughs> Cool. Just turn that height down a bit. All right. So I've just got like a little bit of, <clears throat> little bit of terrain. Right. That's all. That'll do. Could probably make heaps of stuff out of this. So, yeah. I'm just gonna make this, make this bigger. And there we go. So let's kind of bring these. Turn these back on. Is that kind of where we're at? Yep, I think so. All right, so, <clears throat> so my composition here, I want some kind of landscapey stuff. I'm gonna have to make this like pretty big. So we've got some bits and pieces kind of off to the side here and I'm just gonna go shift D and duplicate this so this is where I'm just starting to kind of set up the scene a bit now right this part is gonna take some time <laughs> But, you know, just keep playing with it, building it up, getting it right. We're going to kind of make a giant city, so <laughs> it may take a bit of time. Um, so we'll do something here. We'll make some water really quick as well. Got to sort of try and get the scale right as well. Like it's going to probably take a while because some of these bits probably need to be like gigantic. But whatever, we'll just we'll just kind of work it up. So let's kind of almost like go that because because I want there to be like a there's a big body of water right, and we're kind of like looking from back here. And we kind of want to have yeah kind of something like this right just sort of just rough from a really rough really rough sort of blocking so all i'm doing is like adding that there. Let's just move this rock. This is probably going to cause all sorts of problems, so I might even just we'll just hide that guy. Where is he? Alright, and <clears throat> let's turn this into water really quick. <clears throat> because I know like not all of this is water we're going to have all land on here and everything needs to be on land but we're going to have a big chunk of this is going to be water so um, I can see when I kind of turn this back on I can kind of see like oh I need to shrink that down so that you know the squares not sitting grossly above there all right so let's go back into materials I'm clicking on this plane let's go back to materials and we're just going to remove that uh, material and we just want to do a new material right and basically what we want to do is we just want to change the base color to um yeah i mean just at this point in time something maybe that matches that what we've kind of got behind there a bit you know something like this and then all you basically do is turn the roughness down to pretty much like zero all right and then when you go into let me go into into here cycles 
Oh yeah. So we get like all the reflections and everything, right? So we can just turn that up. Yeah, you can turn it down or turn it up, just depending on how like kind of reflective you want it to be. And then we can like add noise and stuff and all that type of thing to this. But anyway, whatever. We've got to we've got to get we've got to get there. Um, let's go into here. So we need to we need to probably start about some of the scale of this. You know, so we want like all of this weld to be on this kind of land in some shape. It's not just all in the water. Does that sort of make sense? So we've got a bit of, you know, it's flatter, flatter back there. It's cutting into our, you know, go down here, but this isn't even sort of like the, the final thing or whatever, right? So. Just kind of starting to just lay out some of this stuff. So, and we can start, you know, I guess I'm starting to think about like kind of roughly where the camera's going to be and stuff as well. Oops. We need to make some of that like not so steep and crazy. Just trying to match. I'm just looking at my thumbnail and just starting to kind of match some of that. Yeah. We can play around with all these bits and pieces. Just a bit kind of back here. that around just starting to think about this a little bit we'll, I'll show you we'll set up a camera and all that stuff we'll, we'll do that probably next week just for this point in time, point in time just sort of moving some things around What do we got? What are we thinking? Maybe these are <clears throat> sandy Egypt. Uh, I've got a <laughs> hi everyone. Uh, yeah, so thinking about is like what? What does this kind of look like? We're doing kind of lush green or sand or whatever. Mm. Try. Let's just add. Uh, let's go into Blender. Go back into Bridge. It's cool. I mean, we can add in all these sort of pieces and everything. We'll get. We'll get there. We'll get there with all this stuff. Uh, maybe. Maybe something like that. Let's just try it. Uh, I'm just going to download this because it was. A, that was being sort of funky before. So make sure it's like not 8K, otherwise things get a bit out of control. But just download this one again. We'll just sort of try it really quick. We're just trial and error at the moment. Nothing sort of too locked in or anything just yet. And 
just always make sure it's like kind of going to the blender export it out successful yay all right let's just click on here let's go back into this viewport option uh, sometimes it's hard to find these uh, beach sand is that it I guess that's it I uh, getting these textures from uh, from the Quixel bridge so you have to download this app and you got to sign in with your Unreal Engine account and then you can do all this stuff <laughs> all right so you can see here got our texture but like it's kind of really big right so all right let's go back into here and we've got to fix all those bits up this is the bit that kind of takes a little while in um in uh blender so click on the object and then we've got to we're always going to do these steps like connecting that normal to the bump it's good these texture coordinates are here working and then let's change the scale to like 0 0.5 0.5 it's gonna have to be like way smaller right so it's like like 0 0.05 so then it's like way too small <laughs> like nine you can kind of tell pretty quick it's like this is the bit where it's kind of difficult Point zero three two zero point two All right, getting close. And the other thing that we can do here, so it's like that sort of starts looking a bit repetitive. Point zero point one five. And it's also sometimes a bit tricky to tell until you get into the cycles as well. Um, <clears throat> but the other thing that we can do here is remember this is still set to flat. So we'll try uh, Alt, Alt, click box and they'll sort of change that that texture around sometimes it will work better on like flat on these sort of like bigger terrains as well so you've just got to try and see how it kind of looks so let's go into cycles as we do all this stuff it's going to take longer um longer all the time <laughs> um, let's go a and change that back to alt flat oh box yeah probably better on box but 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 minus 0 0.3 So always playing around with these settings. Point zero No. <laughs> so undo that. Sometimes undoing in like the cycles renderer tab there is like not a good idea.
Oh yeah, Bradley, yeah, Aaron Blaze, yeah, awesome. He's very, very good. So yeah, any of those courses you can get from Aaron Blaze, they're great. I bet with this one. Oh, that's kind of not too bad. That's right. I bet with this one, if I make it, let's try it with the. Um, I'm kind of mucking around with this without displacement yet, but this, the displacement will make this look pretty cool. Um, so I just want to get it kind of sort of okay ish. Because then we can just use this as a bit of a placeholder anyway. Um, okay, I think that's cool. So let's go back in here and quickly do that little displacement thing again. Let's move these out of the way. This is sometimes like having these a bit more organized. Let's bring this down here. Shift D. Right. Shift A, so displace. Connect the vector into the vector here. Get the color into the height, and then the displacement. I'm just using middle mouse click to do that to pan around. Connect that into the displacement, and nothing much is going to happen because remember we need to go down to the settings and displacement and bump and then let's go back to cycles because the displacement only happens when you get into cycles and yeah so you can see with this one it's going a bit like janky 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 so we need to kind of muck around with this one so sometimes it's the scale is like oops 0.1 Let's see what like 0 0.01 does. Probably not much. So it's displacing a bit. 0 0.1. Yeah. So someone there, someone there is pretty cool. There we go, 0 0.5. It's good. Once you get stuck in all these like jankies happening, that's where you kind of like, yeah. So if I made this like three, it's gonna be like whoa, <laughs> right? Which can be good in some cases, right? But zero point three, zero point two. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. And then we can. Uh, 0.3 so you can kind of muck around with these settings 0.4 nah, so as soon as we go there we start getting kind of like these weird business going on so 3 0.2 oh, 1 what happens if I do that We'll just leave that where it is. <clears throat> and then sometimes like once you've got it in there, then then maybe that's when you want to go back in and play with this scale. So zero point six. like one because sometimes you can get some kind of like more interesting results in there yeah but anyway we can we're going to put all sorts of yeah we'll do all sorts of stuff here anyway. so we'll just go shift 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 control 
L materials. And there we go. And remember our light shadow cube we had? So that's like casting shadows over a bunch of that stuff now, which is pretty cool. And we start kind of coming into here, doing a bit of this, and yeah, like, like I said, we can we can like set up a better camera and stuff. But you kind of get the idea, right? It's like this is the where we're starting to move into, which is pretty cool. So yeah, we'll keep working on this um so i guess next week it's kind of like fleshing out stuff we can go into like hey you can add in like foliage and you know plants and yeah all, all sorts of stuff um we'll really build up this whole like kind of city and things so i think at the moment it's probably like a little bit close in so we probably need to keep spreading this out but um like in terms of that scale and things but yeah it's starting to look pretty cool remember i want to have some things like uh Oh, we're like way over time, aren't we? Oops, get too excited. <laughs> oh, 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 cube there. <laughs> uh, I don't know, whatever it is, right? But like. <laughs> But yeah, we want to have some stuff that's kind of like sort of that scale. Text is a bit uh, not quite right, but yeah, you get what I mean. So we're going to have some really big, some big elements in here. Probably need to push that. Let's imagine it's back there. And once we start getting like some atmosphere and things in here, it's going to. It's going to start coming to life and like I said break up some of these things so we can add some different like textures and colors and yeah all sorts of stuff I think it's gonna it's gonna really start heading in a pretty cool direction so um, yeah cool all right well um that's it for this week and uh, yeah we'll, we'll catch you guys again uh, again next week hopefully okay all right bye guys